Hi, and welcome to lecture 12 for Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we'll be looking at section 2.2 of the textbook, which looks at the inverse of a matrix. We'll actually be spending two lectures on this material, since there's a lot of material in, the, in this section. Now, in today's lecture, there's kind of three things that we want to look at. The first thing that we want to look at is the uh, what is the notion of an invertible matrix. The second thing that we want to look at is how does one find these inverses? So that's what we'll be discussing the procedure. And the last thing that we'll be looking at is what is the connection between systems of linear equations and the inverse of a matrix? So let's jump right in and start talking about the inverse of a matrix. So we're just going to use as our starting point the fact that the real numbers have a property that we use almost all the time. Namely, if you have a non-zero real number, then there exists a multiplicative inverse, A inverse, such that A times A inverse equals 1. So what this is saying is that I can find a number that I can multiply my original number by to get to 1. So as a very simple example of that, let's say I gave you the number 17. What is the multiplicative inverse? Then the multiplicative inverse of 17 is 1 over 17, since 17 times 1 over 17 is equal to 1. So this property that the real numbers have, that it, that is, every element has a multiplicative inverse, provided you're not zero, is the property that we want to develop for matrices. Okay, so that's our goal. We want a similar property for matrices. So that's our goal, and we wanna, in order to help us with that goal, let's just introduce some terminology. So we say that a square matrix, so we're only going to be talking about square matrices, a square matrix A is invertible if there is another n by n matrix C such that C times A is equal to the identity or the same thing as A times C gives me the identity. Now the n here refers to the size of the matrix. And in the original definition, we wanted to find something that multiplied my number A to give me one and we remember when we're dealing with matrices, the identity plays the role of one. So this seems to be the natural generalization of the multiplicative inverse. And let's just give some more terminology here is C is the inverse of the matrix A. And we want to kind of mimic the notation that we have up above. And we denote C by a negative one to represent the inverse, the fact that it's the inverse. And if no C exists, A is called a singular matrix. So A is called singular. So let me give you an example, first of all, to show you that yes, inverses exist. So here I have a matrix A it's a two by two matrix, and I have a matrix C, which is also a two by two matrix. And let's multiply these two matrices together. So this is kind of good review of our matrix operations. I take this row and I pair it with this column and I get one. I take this row and pair it with this column. So one times negative one is zero plus uh, one, oh, sorry, negative one plus one times one is one. So I will get a zero there. In this spot, I will get a zero. And in this spot right here, I get a one which is now equal to the identity matrix. So in this case, well, technically you should also check that this is the same thing as A times C. So C is the inverse of my matrix A. So inverses do exist. We have a, a very simple example of such a thing. And so the question is, well, how do you find the inverse of a matrix? Now, in, in the next part of this lecture, we'll, we'll deal with kind of like any matrix, but for the two by two case, there's actually kind of a, a nice formula that, to, uh, that allows us to find the inverse. And the two by two case is stated as follows. Supposing you're given a two by two matrix and you're looking at some number that you form from this matrix. So AD minus CB, you should notice that this is coming from you take this diagonal, and that's the AD, you multiply them together and you subtract it from the anti-diagonal. And you look at the dis difference. 
And this number here, we're going to talk about it more fully when we get to chapter 3. This is called the determinant of A. Now, if the determinant of A is not 0, then the inverse exists. And moreover, the inverse is given by this formula. You take your original matrix, and what you do is you swap the order of the D and the A on the diagonal, and on the anti-diagonal, you keep the, the B and the C in the same spot, but you put a negative sign in front, and then you rescale your matrix by one over the value of the determinant. This is part of the reason we need this number to be non-zero, because we don't want to accidentally divide by zero. So for the two by two case, things are nice. We have a formula. And so let me end off the first part of our lecture giving you a matrix A, one, two, four, seven. And just to kind of reinforce the idea of this formula, find the inverse of this matrix. After the break, we'll, I'll show you the answer.